You want to explain to her this ain't the Four Seasons? I swear, if she hits that button again, she's going to feel a whole new source of pain. Hey! Hassan Michael! He's on the floor! He's not breathing! I don't know what happened! He, he just collapsed! I don't know! Come on, hurry! Michael, baby, please talk to me! Come on, baby! Please talk to me! Help him! Help him! Ma'am, I need to look at him. Please, 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 well, there's no obvious trauma. But he was fine one minute and dead the next. Well, that happened to my Uncle Harry. They called it a heart attack. A 19-year-old kid? It's not likely. As soon as we pronounced, we got everybody out. Nothing's been touched in the room, either. Is that blood coming out of his mouth? Pulmonary edema. His lungs filled up as he was dying. That can happen with the poisoning? Absolutely. Where's his mother now? Down the hall. Sedated. She was in a pretty bad way. Change of clothes, some books, cell phone. Who would have been in and out of this room tonight? Nurses on shift, uh, an attendant, maybe. Regular traffic. What time is dinner normally? Um, seven, I think. She's the patient. Food was for her. Maybe the kid wasn't supposed to be the victim. That son of a bitch killed Michael. I know he did. Now, what are you going to do about it? Who are you talking about? Miles Foster, my husband's son. He and his sister Hillary are contesting the will in court. I have a legal right to that inheritance. William signed the papers. How much money are we talking about exactly? 46 million. I can't believe Michael's gone. We didn't get any time together. Why do you have to hurt him? It's possible that you were the target here, Miss Jones. Oh my God. These people think they can do anything. This Miles Foster, has he ever threatened you before? That's all he's done. He's had men follow me home, crank phone calls. Okay, we'll look into that. Now, what's the state of this settlement? There is no settlement. All the money's tied up in probate. What happens if you're not around? Under the terms of the will, everything goes to Miles and Hillary. I want that man arrested! Ashley Jones is accusing me of poisoning her son? This nightmare won't end. Well, we believe someone intended to poison her. I applaud them for the effort, but I assure you I had nothing to do with it, Detective. You and your sister stood to gain. We're about to win our lawsuit. We have no reason to do something like that. She can appeal, can't she? She can take it to the Supreme Court, for all I care. The woman's been exposed as a first-rate con artist. How'd she manage to stick a claim in the first place? By manipulating my father. 92 and declining health, she tricked him into marriage and contrived a way to amend his estate plans. Maybe he was in love. I know she certainly wasn't. My father died less than a year after they were married. She's used every scheme in the book to get her hands on that money. Knowing her, she probably killed her own son just to accuse me. Well, she said you threatened her in the past. People following her home? We hired private investigators to document her lifestyle. It was never intended as a threat. This talk showed moderate levels of heroin and a couple prescription medications. He died of the drug cocktail? That probably helped him along. The actual cause of death was a golf ball-sized metastatic tumor in his brain. Well, he complained of a headache before he collapsed. Yeah, I bet he did. Probably had a massive seizure. So he died of complications from cancer? Uh, not so fast. I'm ruling it a homicide. How you figure? The non-recreational pharmaceuticals in his blood were cyclosporin and prednisone. Immunosuppressants. People take them when they get a new kidney or a new heart. What did he get? New legs. See here and here? He got cancer from bone grafts. You got it. You're looking at first-class surgery with third-rate donor material. 
How'd that happen? It shouldn't have. The bone should have been screened and sterilized. No way this came from a legitimate tissue bank. Are we talking about black market body parts? I typed the cells in the tumor, even called in a neuropath consultant for confirmation. This young man died of ovarian cancer. Wilson, AKA John Doe, two shattered femurs. Looks like we treated him about a year and a half ago. You did bone grafts on him to repair his legs? Uh, not according to this. Kid had insurance issues. Card probably came back stolen. All right, so if he can't pay, what happens next? Well, if you can't pay, you get the blue light special. In this case, double amputation. You gotta be kidding me. Hey, blame the bean counters. We don't take any pleasure cutting off someone's legs. Look, doctor, up until two days ago, he was walking upright. We know he got bone grafts on both legs. Maybe he transferred out. Look, there's no way he got that kind of charity here. Well, what does this chart say? Um, missing a couple pages. It happens. Okay, do you have any idea where this surgery might have been done? Uh, there's a nonprofit orthopedic clinic in Manhattan. Doctor, They've taken some of our hard luck cases in the past. Um, Dr. Vaughn runs the program. Guy's practically pining for sainthood. This way. You're sure about this? Ovarian cancer? The ME thinks it came from the bones you used to fix his legs. I'm sorry, I highly doubt that. The ME seems pretty confident it came from the graft. Doctor, we need to know where the donor bones came from. We use several procurement companies and tissue banks. It could have come from any one of them. Well, how do you cover your uninsured patients? Through grants and fundraising. Our clinic has an operating budget of almost $15 million. Most of that goes to subsidizing patient care. $15 million, and all that comes from financial donations. People give generously to help us care for the working poor and indigent, to help a patient like Michael who almost lost his legs because he was homeless. And you don't occasionally cut corners. We may be a nonprofit clinic, but our quality of care is on par with any university hospital. Look, detective, it's extremely rare for cancer to metastasize the bone. Michael must have contracted the disease some other way. Now, as far as the graft bones are concerned, I'm telling you, I don't know which company procured them. Don't you at least have the donor's name? The provenance has to be tracked somehow. I have a copy of the donor's death certificate. That's it. Karen Kendall. 21 years old. You'll also notice the cause of death. It wasn't ovarian cancer. Karen was driving home from college for spring break. A truck cut her off in the tunnel coming into Manhattan. The doctors said she was brain dead. We took her off life support six days after the accident. Did you donate any of her organs or tissue at that time? No, no, we never consented to anything like that. The, the hospital asked us to, but it, it was too much with Baron dying so suddenly. Which hospital? Chase General. They said they'd take care of her. But you're saying they did it anyway? We think that somebody did. Oh my God. Had your daughter been diagnosed with ovarian cancer? Cancer? No. She was in peak health. She ran marathons. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Kendall, we're going to need to verify what happened to your daughter's body, so the medical examiner is going to want to look at her remains. She was cremated. Who handled the cremation? Uh, Bix Funeral Home. Uh, Tony Bix helped us with the arrangements. <laughs> Talk to the hospital morgue. They're the body butchers. The hospital says you picked up Aaron Kendall's body within two hours of her death. Apparently, it would have taken too long to harvest her remains there. I'm sorry, I don't remember. You signed her out. We have the time. Well, if that's what it says, then that's what I did. What was the rush? I was probably there on another run. She was the only body that day. What are you getting at? What she's getting at is there's a small window of time to harvest her remains before they're unusable. Unusable and worthless to a paying tissue bank. And you think that's what I did? That body was cremated, which means you could have taken anything you wanted and nobody would know that the family didn't give their consent. I think you're making a lot of unfounded accusations here, detective. Cool. How about we have a look at your records? We can straighten this out right now. I think you can take it up with my attorney. We can get a warrant if we have to. Myers, Prescott, and Mendelbaum, they're in the yellow pages. You call them. We'll wait. 
278 bodies went through Bick's funeral home last year. Of those, 213 did not consent to donate tissue or bone. And most of those names are now showing up on the donor lists. Who would Bick sell to? They could have been any number of tissue banks or brokers. Every company I talked to was not willing to admit that they bought directly from him. Yeah, well, worried about liability. This stuff could be scattered across the country. I pulled the LUDs from the funeral home. Bix called Vaughn's clinic on a regular basis. You think Vaughn knew what he was getting? Well, he said he didn't. And he might not have if Bix was forging consent forms, death certificates. He wasn't exactly helpful when we talked to him. How much money are we talking about? OK, you want the list? Now, these are non-organ parts, veins, cartilage, tendons, bones. One body is worth over 200 grand. Do Bix's financials bear that out? Now, he's got a little sum in the bank, but nothing like this kind of cash flow. He's got to be hiding it. Even still, we can't pin him for the murder of Michael Jones. Well, we can get him for grand larceny and forgery, right? Only if you can prove that Bix was the one who pillaged the corpses. A lot of those bodies didn't get cremated. Talk to the families. We need to start digging people up. <laughs> 